Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking about whether or not raccoons actually make good pets. In order to do so, we need to take a look at what's happening out in nature. I know this might not sound uh, intuitive, however, if you stick with me, we'll clear things up about it, and it'll all make sense in the end. Raccoons typically undergo their biggest transformation their first year of life, and that's because they're only given a handful of months to go from a newborn baby raccoon to a sub-adult raccoon, where they're out to fend for themselves in the wild. So typically around springtime, raccoons will have their litter, and so they're given from spring to fall, and sometimes even the following spring, to go from a baby raccoon to a sub-adult, where like I said, they're on their own. Um, and this is such a short period of time, especially considering that raccoons are actually born blind, and they don't open their eyes until about three weeks. And on top of that, once they do see, they aren't mobile until another um, four to five, or no, five to six more weeks on top of that. Tito. 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 Quinn. Already right off the top, they're already kind of like handicapped, for lack of a better word, two months because, you know, they can't see when they're first born and they also can't walk. And so within that eight to 12 month time period, they have to not only change physically, but they also have to change mentally. So they go from like less than a pound newborns to maybe 10, uh, 10 to 12 pounds by the time they're leaving. So like you have that huge physical growth within that time period, uh, but they also have to mentally prepare themselves to be on their own and leave their mother because if they don't know how to survive on their own, then they won't be able to, you know, make it. And so some of the things that they have to learn how to do is, you know, forage for their food, hunt, avoid predators, and just like learn how to climb. So like they'll learn all of that within that first several months. And so what happens a lot of the time, unfortunately, is that when people find a baby raccoon, they're so cute and innocent because they're still in their helpless stages that they can't really do anything about, you know, about anything. And so they can cuddle you, uh, they like pets and all that stuff. But however, because they grow up so fast, their instinct is to break away from you. And within a few months, they're going to be on their own. And that's what that drives them. Their instinct is to grow and develop as fast as possible so they can spread their genes. And that's considered winning in nature, is spreading their genes so they can have offspring and like kind of propagate the species as a whole. When people take in these pet raccoons instead of giving them to rehabbers, because most of the people that keep the raccoons, their intention is to make them a pet. However, like I said, since they develop so quickly, both physically and mentally, the people who take them in don't understand like raccoon instinct in their behavior. And so they're kind of blindsided by this rapid change of events. And so uh, when they're developing that quickly, they, for the raccoon will go from cute and cuddly to always following you around to not wanting to listen because they get so big and their claws so sharp a lot of times that they become more aggressive and if you don't know how to handle that behavior it becomes like raccoons are horrible pets and it's like no you just don't understand their physiology and things like that and so um, people think they just make bad pets in general, but it's really comes down to oh, lack of understanding is what it really boils down to. But they're definitely, definitely not meant to be pets for like 99% of people. A lot of times people can't handle being scratched or bitten like they do when they play. They're also like significantly more aggressive than any dog or cat would be. Hey buddy. Um, but like it's all about training the pet your animal and if you don't know how to give it what it needs then you shouldn't have it as a pet and I think in some cases raccoons should be pets I don't know why people say oh they belong in the, the wild and all that um, if you think about it I mean we have dogs for a reason we have cats for a reason and I don't think raccoons should be an exception just because they're not a common animal. I mean, they are common. They're actually really common. Um, however, there's no reason why they shouldn't be pets, except only to people who actually have the time, the patience, and the ability to care for them. And I think too many people try to take them on, and they're just not ready. They're definitely advanced level pets, 
and people just see the cute pictures on Instagram and YouTube and think, oh, I want one of that, but they don't uh, consider how much time and effort goes into each uh, pet raccoon that they see. It's a lot of training, a lot of playing with them and stuff. And if you leave them cooped up for hours on end, they get really aggressive. So they're big time consumption and people just don't understand that. Now I really want to emphasize like the two points I've been making all video is that their mental transformation is just how drastic it is. Because when these little guys are babies, their main goal is to how can I go from being reliant on my mom to how can I be self-sufficient out in the wild. And so when people take in these baby raccoons, they see them as their mother, and they see them as needing to be taken care of, which they do, but because of how quick their transformation happens, that it's almost like a light switch going off. Once it's flipped, that is all they can think about. So their cute, innocent raccoon goes from following them everywhere to not listening, not obeying what their commands that they've given them, and when you couple this with the second thing I was talking about, their uh, physical transformation, they go from you know less than a pound being a newborn to almost to like a really big animal. As you can see, Tito is kind of a chunk, <laughs> but he, you know like they when they develop, they start getting stronger. Their claws get sharper, and their cute nibbles turn into really like powerful bites. And because of the nature of a raccoon, uh, they're not like a cat or a dog. They, uh, they're pretty aggressive animals, and so when you get that transformation, that mental transformation mixed with the physical transformation, things go downhill quickly because not only do they not listen anymore, but they play really aggressively, and so a lot of people can't handle all the bites and scratches that come with a raccoon. And so because of these two main reasons, I don't think they make good pets for the majority of people. However, once, uh, once they start getting older, past like the one year mark into the like one and a half year mark, they start understanding that they don't have to go into the wild, that they're part of your family. And so they start understanding where they fit in in relationship to you. And that you're kind of like their mom, uh, you're, they're, you're part of their family, and that's not changing. And so once they understand that, they start calming down. They don't have to like their natural instincts to you know, always move around, forage, their fight or flight instincts when it comes to predators. That, I wouldn't say it goes away, but it definitely decreases. And your raccoon starts listening to you more and you know, it just becomes a better like dynamic. And so I about lost my mind when Tito was about seven months old, because that's kind of like the peak time of when they really don't want to listen and they're really preparing themselves to be out on their own. However, as Tito hit that one and a half year mark, uh, man, things have changed like dramatically. Like, like I was saying, he he was really testing my patience. But now that he's older, he knows where he belongs in this family, and he's calmed down so much. And it's been a really enjoyable experience since then. And so, um, and yeah, so. If, if a raccoon is healthy enough to go back in the wild and you rescued it from the wild, that's where it needs to be. So I always recommend find a rehabber as soon as possible because you know that you owe it to the animal to put him back where he belongs. However, there are some cases where there's non-releasables such as like a neurological disorder or something like that, then they can go you know be, be, become pets essentially. However, it, it requires a lot of time money and space you really have to have all of those things for them to be like good happy healthy animals and so and most people can't provide it they think that they can get away with just like an hour or two of play time here um, they try to let them free roam which in some cases it can work but expect a lot of your stuff to be broken or spend a lot of money raccoon proofing your house but with that being said i hope you guys learned something from this video i want to kind of like share my experiences as well as enlighten people that are going through this ex uh, experience um, and kind of show them like why that their raccoon is behaving the, the way they are and just kind of clear up some misconceptions. If you like this video be sure to like and subscribe um, and if you want to support us uh, we're launching a website pretty soon where we sell uh, Tito paintings, Tito original masterpieces um, and then we also sell shirts at the bottom of these videos. 
So if you want to help out our channel in any way, uh, those are two good options. But thanks again for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed.